Hello everybody, it's Ivan and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a night exterior lighting with Corona Render. Let's see it! Let's check what we already have in that project. As we can see there is a modern house with materials, camera in the right viewport and greenery, but no lights. First. We will add a natural lighting with the sky and then create artificial light. A few ceiling clamps above the terrace and few in the interior. IES lights will also be added. If I open the render settings, we will notice that the resolution is set to HDTV. Also, I want to render only through the left viewport with the camera, so I will select it and walk the view. Ok. Now we can start working. Let's start the interactive render from the Corona toolbar and the virtual frame buffer will appear. Here we will see the render. Since there are no lights in the project, everything is black. In this case, we want a night or evening mode. The easiest way to add such would be to open Chaos Cosmos, navigate to the HDRIs category and evening skies. All the HDRIs here actually are spherical 360 degree images which is great, they will wrap the whole scene. I have already downloaded this one, so I will import it. Otherwise, there will be an icon to download it first. Ok, now I can close the Cosmos browser and see the result. Obviously, it is very bright. We can easily fix that by decreasing the exposure value in the VFB. Try with few values and see which one will work for your image. I think that minus 5 looks ok here. But it's not actually a night sky, it's more like a sunset one. Let's see how to change that one and if we cannot, we can just import another one from Chaos Cosmos. Before I switch it, I will change its rotation. To do it, first click M to open the material editor. Here we will manipulate the texture which is located in the scene tab of the render settings inside the environment single map slot. Just drag and drop it, choose instance. In the texture properties there is a rotation value, so we can try with different numbers. Ok, I like this one, it feels like the sun has just dropped below the horizon. Still, there is one thing that I would like to change. It is too yellowish. To change that, I can go to the white balance and reduce it until I am satisfied. Usually in Corona Render, 6500K is the neutral white balance of the camera. Reducing that number will make the image bluish while increasing it yellowish. Ok, this was the look I am after and I really like it. Glad that I did not switch that HDRI with another one. After the overall natural lighting is set, I will add some more life into the building with artificial lights. They will be warmer and thus we will achieve a really nice contrast between the cold bluish environment and the warmer house. To start, let's close the windows. Also, to be more organized, I've already created a layer for the light so I will make it the active one. First. Let's create the ceiling lights above the terrace. To isolate them, use the shortcut Alt plus Q. Since in the next few minutes I will work with the lights, let's change the selection type to lights only. Ok, now navigate to the lights tab in the create panel and choose from the drop down menu Corona and then Corona light. After that, under the shape, click on the drop down and select disk option. Now click, hold and drag to specify the radius. Before we move on, I will rename it in order to be more organized. Then copy the light as an instance into the other ceiling clamps. No doubt a lot of Corona users will use the sphere option, I think that the disc is the closest light to the real world ceiling clamps. Ok, the ceiling lights above the balcony are placed, 
Now unhide all from the isolate button and start again the interactive render. Obviously, the newly created lights are barely visible. This is because the intensity is very low. Let's select one of them and take a look at its properties. First, we need to increase the intensity. Try with a few values until you are satisfied. Ok, the value is getting huge because the HDRI is very bright. We can see it but the light is too cold. Remember how we have decreased the white balance to make the sky bluish. Now, even if the direct core is white, it will look colder. However, I want to have warmer cores inside, so I will switch from direct light to Kelvins. In the real world, Kelvin is used to specify how warm is the light from light bulbs and general light sources. As we can see on these images, the light is getting warmer from something like 4000K and below. I will try to decrease it even more because we already changed the white balance of the whole image and thus I will compensate. Ok, I like it now. It's warm, but not too yellowish. Finally, I will slightly increase the disk radius to be an integer number. Another thing that I will change right away is how these light sources look. To make them softer, I will enable the boom and glare effect. This will make them smooth and with some nice flakes. Just try with their intensity and find the right amount for your image. I will also use disc lights for the interior ceiling lamps, like I already did for the one above the terrace. There is no difference, so I will skip that process. Let's create some IES lights to make the metal panels on the facade more interesting. Navigate to the Corona lights again, but this time from the drop down menu choose Sphere shape. I will place it in front of the panel to lift it from below. Ok, there it is. To see the light better, I will disable for a moment the boom and glare effect. Let's take a look at the properties. Reduce the intensity because it's obviously too strong. And I will reduce the radius for the very same reason. Again, to keep our files organized, I will rename it. And here is the interesting part. Scroll down to the IES parameters and click on None to load an IES profile. It will take you directly to the Corona IES folder where you can choose from the existing or download some from the web. There are some tools to create custom IES but this is a topic for another video. I will choose the first one. We can see in the front view that the sphere light now has something like a direction and it points down. Let's rotate it to point up and light the panel. I will move it even closer and increase the effect to be more prominent. Ok, it's already visible and the light profile is clear. Great, now I just need to copy that light on all the panels here. Ok, we have the lights. We also have the color contrast we were aiming for, the cold cores outside and the warm core inside, so we can stop here and have a great result. But we can make it more interesting going one step further and create an artistic light. Now that we have all the necessary lights, Let's bring some life to the grass in front of the house. I will achieve it with fake lights, which will give the impression that the light from the house is reaching the grass. These lights will be absolutely decorative. Like the lighting in a studio or theater with only a creative purpose. For this example, 
I will use Corona Rectangle Light. We don't need the source visible, so let's get rid of it. Go to the properties and in the visibility options uncheck visible directly, visible in reflections and just for any case visible in refractions. Another thing that we have not paid attention to is the directionality option. It defines how spread the light is. With zero, which is the default value, the light will be spread in all directions, while with one, the light will be very concentrated. As we can see 0.6 is still too sharp. Let's try with small values like 0.2. Ok, I like it, so I will copy to the other part of the composition. You can use the same way not only rectangles but also spherical or disc lights. As we can see, we have a hue in the background, but I would like to fade out and blend with the sky. I can easily use the global volumetric option, but this will affect the whole image. To limit the effect and to fade only the ground and the sky close to it, I will use an object. Here we can see it. I cannot select it now because we have changed the selection option to light. So bring it back to O and now we can select it. As we can notice, the object is thicker in the lower parts and thinner in the upper. Let's create the material. Right click Corona, Corona Volume Material. Change the distance, the core and the direction until you like it. Ok, this makes the background to slightly fade out and blend with the sky. Now that everything is set, it's time to render our image. Stop the interactive render and open again the render settings. Go to the scene tab, click on light mix and generate it. Render. Now the render is clear enough so we can make some final core corrections. I will change the contrast as well as fine tune on the exposure, white balance, saturation and more. We can play a lot with these settings here until we like it. Then I will move to the light mix tab and see if there is a light that I want to tweak. Ok guys, this was all for this tutorial. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want to see more content, check out my other videos and stay tuned for my next tutorial.